David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. There are certain segments of fountain pens which I don't cover too often on this channel. You know, I'm not particularly into vintage pens, so you don't see many of those. And another genre of pens I don't typically cover is what I will broadly categorize as inexpensive Chinese-made pens. Um, I don't have anything against them, uh, except for the ones which are blatant rip-offs of other pens. But the pen I have for you today falls under that Chinese-made category. It's from a company by the name of Hongdian, and the pen is their D5 Chen Dynasty. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this interesting pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Hongdian for providing this pen for review. Now, the easiest place to find this pen is on Amazon. In my personal experience, there is an inverse relation behind the length of an Amazon product description and the quality of the product. Uh, the longer the description, the lower the quality of the product itself. Uh, this pen is listed as Hongdian Hongdian D5 Qin Dynasty Fountain Pen Black Silver Fine Nib Piston Filling Pen Retro Chinese Totem Engraving Smooth Writing Pen with Pen Box Set. Well, what does that look like? It looks like this. Um, it's a nice enough box. The drawer slides open and there are a couple of things. There are, is a use and care guide. Uh, then there is this pen to disassemble the piston, which is much appreciated and a helpful thing to have. And then we have the pen. This is the Hongdian D5. Uh, this design of this particular model is inspired by the reign of the first emperor of China who lived around 2,000 years ago, and it is called the Qin Dynasty. Now, Qin is spelled Q-I-N. Uh, there are a variety of patterns and colors to represent the unification of six different countries during this important time in the history of China. Um, this pen is made from metal and has several metal adornments and overlays. Uh, there is this black and silver model, but then also there are models in black and gold and green and gold, as well as red and silver. Now, a quick aside, you are familiar with the burial site of this first emperor because it is the site of the famous terracotta warriors in the city of Xi'an, China. Now, a couple of years ago, I was fortunate to visit the site of the warriors. Uh, it was truly awe-inspiring. Uh, each of the warriors are different. Uh, they were replicas of the emperor's army. Uh, their faces are different. Some are skinnier, some are a bit larger. Their hairstyles are even different. The site is huge. But I found this amazing. Uh, they have only unearthed a fraction of what is buried. Uh, they know where the emperor's tomb is, uh, where in theory the most amazing finds would be. But even though the initial discovery of the site took place in 1974, there's no date yet set for excavating the emperor's tomb. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, there's a fear of booby traps as well as uh, preserving the integrity of the tomb. There's a fear that unearthing it would actually destroy it. Uh, anyways, I hope that they will eventually get around to figuring out a way to get into the tomb. I would imagine it would be a literal treasure trove, almost like the uh, tomb of Tut Tutankhamun in Egypt. Uh, after we visited the warriors, we went to a nearby area on the site. Uh, here we met the man who back in 1974 actually discovered the warriors when he was digging a well. Uh, then we had a fantastic lunch, one of the best meals we had on our trip. Uh, and then afterward, we went to this tea shop where this lady taught us about Chinese tea, and we were able to make a, a bunch of them and sample them. Uh, then this was a sign that I found in one of the restrooms on site. Um, I ran into many funny English translations like this. Uh, you know, it kind of sounds like the first draft of what Neil Armstrong was going to say when he stepped on the moon. Uh, you know, he looked over at Buzz Aldrin and said, uh, how about a small step forward, one step civilization? Then Buzz was like, I like the path you're going on, Neil, but I think it needs a bit of work. If you're interested in seeing more about China, after my trip, I made two rather extensive vlogs detailing our adventures. I'll put a link to those in the notes below if you're interested in that. So, 
back to the review at hand. Uh, let's take a look at the parts of this pen. On the top, it is stamped with what appears to be an Eastern Dragon, which is different than a Western Dragon. Uh, the top of the cap is slightly flared. There's some interesting detail here with the vertical lines on the flare. Uh, and then there's the area that almost looks like battlements on top of a castle and the spiral design below that. Uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, on the cap, it has a metal overlay. On either side, there's what appears to me to be a phoenix. Now, on the other side of the cap, this overlay has this intricate pattern. I, you know, I noticed something a little bit odd, however. The underlying uh, metal cap has a long meandering groove running through most of the cap's length. It appears to be intentional, but I'm not quite sure of the reasoning or the symbolism. Uh, the clip is interesting. It's made to represent the arrow of a crossbow. Um, I do like the red lacquer fill here, which adds a bit of subtle pop of color. Uh, and then there's a symbol at the tip of the arrow. Now it does bug me a bit, but the arrow is slightly out of alignment with the extension of that red lacquer on the remainder of the barrel. Uh, this clip is flexible enough to use with materials of varying thicknesses, which is nice. Uh, and then at the end of the cap, there is a raised band and a small step down to the barrel. The barrel is made to resemble the pattern of ancient armor. Um, I think it pulls that off well. There are then three equidistant bands. I, I do like how each of the bands has a different patterning. It uh, just makes it that much more visually stimulating. At the end of the barrel, there is a piston knob. Again, each of the bands, except for one, uh, on the knob has different patterning. And then the end of the piston knob is flat and contains this symbol. The cap twists off with a single rotation, and underneath we have a number six stainless steel nib. Um, I believe this is an in-house nib or one from an Asian manufacturer. Um, I don't believe it's any of the European brands. I think the stamping looks nice. Um, I believe this nib is only available in either extra fine or fine. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a flare and then angles up until you get to the cap threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, while this section is metal, I find the armor pattern serves a dual purpose. Um, I think it looks nice and it does provide a, a very nice gripping surface. I find my grip in conjunction with this patterning works well. Um, the pen is a bit on the heavy side, but I don't find it to be overly cumbersome. Um, the cap does post, but it doesn't post that deep and it isn't very secure. So I wouldn't recommend using this pen uh, posted. I would use it unposted. Uh, I mentioned the piston knob before. This is a piston filler. Uh, this is what it looks like when the knob is extended. Uh, I previously showed you the provided tool, which you can use to disassemble the piston for ease of cleaning. Uh, I find those tools to be very nice. Uh, you find that they often work with different brands as well. Uh, the Hongdian D5 can be found on Amazon as well as other places and retails for just under $50, like $49.95. I'll put a link to where you can find it on Amazon in the notes below. Uh, I do feel that's a reasonable price for what you receive with this particular pen. Um, I like that there is a lot going on with the overall design of this pen, but it does flow together well. It's not a haphazard mix of ideas. It's complex without being too over the top and gaudy. While I am still not completely a Chinese pen convert, uh, this pen actually did surprise me a bit, and it would make me more likely to try different ones in the future. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Hongdian D5 Qin Dynasty. I want to give you a closer look at this overlay, which I think is interesting. I think it uh, uh, has a lot of variance, but it isn't necessarily uh, too gaudy or over the top. And I mentioned I like this as well, that each of these three bands are different. I just think that that's a nice way to do that. And I do kind of like that uh, armor patterning there. But in regard to some size comparisons, um, here it is with a, another pen from China, which is the Asvin 
V169. Uh, then here it is with a Lamy All-Star. And here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. In regard to a couple of other pins, here it is with a Sailor 1911, that's a standard. Uh, and then here it is with a Montegrappa Elmo, that's the Chrissy Ocola model, which was sold through Goulet pens, which I really like. And then here is a Platinum 3776, and that's the Chartres Blue. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Asphine and the Lamy All-Star. And then here it is with the Sailor 1911 standard. Now, in regard to this tool, I really can't demonstrate this completely because this pen is inked right now, but when you extend the uh, piston knob, then you can see that there are two little nibs here at the end. This goes ahead and fits right in here, and then you put it in the holes that are inside here, and then you can twist this around, and it will unscrew the piston for, uh, for easy cleaning. Uh, if you need to disassemble the pen, this is the best way to do it. Uh, my guess is, I didn't try, but my guess is that the nib is not going to come off of this pen, and the best way to clean it, uh, if you wanted a thorough cleaning, other than just running water through it, would be to use this tool. Here we go with the writing sample for the Hongdian. I've seen it listed as one word or two words. Uh, this is the D5, and this is the Qin Dynasty. And this is a fine stainless steel nib. Uh, I will say it's kind of on the uh, medium side of fine. And the ink I'm using, I thought it would be nice to use a nice red ink, a deep red ink with this. And it's one of my favorites, which is Stilo and Stile. And this is Roman Centurion Red. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice deep red. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Birmingham Penn's Fred Rogers Cardigan Red, which I love. Uh, and here's another red I love, which is the Algonquin Maple from Ferris Wheel Press. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, you know, while I think the bottle looks nice, uh, my main problem is this is just way too shallow. Um, I wish that uh, it contained about 60 milliliters of ink as opposed to the 30 and that the uh, ink went further down just because it's really hard to get some nibs in here because it's not that much ink. But the ink is fantastic. I just wish the bottle was a little bit different. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I do find this fine nib to be pleasant. Like I said, that uh, it is more on the medium side of fine. Uh, it does have a little bit of flex that you could push out of here. Um, I, it's not super smooth, but it does have just a fair amount of what I'll call decent feedback. Um, I have noticed that it has a tendency to dry out a little quickly if I just leave it uncapped for a minute. Uh, but the ink flow is very nice. In regard to reverse writing, It's a little scratchy, uh, but in regard to fast writing, the feed keeps up very well. So here we have the Hongdian D5 Chin Dynasty. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with this pen. Uh, I do like the looks of it. I think that for the price, it's a decent quality. Uh, the performance is nice. Uh, it, it has a lot going on without being necessarily over the top. Uh, and uh, like I said, I was pleasantly surprised. So I think for the money, it's a decent offering. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.